guys, and welcome to Odson Serie A, one of our favorite competitions is back, and we have of course a Danny Fisichella with us to analyze everything and give you some tips, but of course I also want to know your opinion, so don't forget and leave a comment below with your tips, and of course if you enjoy our videos, press the like button, subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications, and now let's go on with the show. This weekend is starting the Serie A, always exciting. Last year was uh, really, really interesting. So, how are you, Danny? Let's analyze everything again. Hi, Edu. So, here we are again. The League of the Champions of Europe starts uh, this weekend, and this is going to be a Serie A more competitive than ever. Well, six out of eight top teams have changed the manager inter are chasing their second star the 20th title but they'll have to do it without conte without lukaku a mini revolution allegri is back with juventus but Serie A has lost the keeper who saved the penalty the last penalty of the euros donnarumma and also lukaku so a lot of changes yeah, and let's start analyzing a little bit and uh, fast the outright odds for this uh, Scudetto title because it's, uh, Juventus is really favorite. Uh, there are a lot of changes, as you say, and as we are going to analyze. Uh, and now the outright odds, we have Juventus 1.9, the current champion Inter Milan 5.0 only, then Atalanta 6.5 and then Napoli 14, Milan 14. You also see Juve that favorite with uh, Allegri on the bench back. I think Allegri's factor is really, really important for Juventus. They quickly realized, well, it took them almost uh, nine months to realize that Pirlo wasn't the right choice. He wasn't prepared. He didn't have uh, the charisma and also the tactical knowledge to affect Juventus. So Allegri, who's been there, who won with Juventus, is back. And, and he, he will, will bring, bring a, a very, very much uh, pragmatic uh, approach. He knows how to uh, get the best out of this group of players. But Juventus, we have to remember, still hasn't bought anybody in the transfer market. Man maybe Manuel Locatelli will come. So they'll have a bit of a um, rebus who's going to be uh, their regista, the playmaker in the middle of the field. And also who's going to play as a number nine? Because I'm not sure Cristiano wants to be isolated up top there. So yes, they are favorite also because Inter has changed pretty much everything out of a sudden, you know, the club was in financial turmoil, but who knows, maybe there could be a fair surprise, a certain special one is back in Serie A, you never know. I read today in the Italian newspaper actually Roma da Scudetto if they are going to win the title because of the market they are doing probably they are very optimistic but let's analyze game by game and we can stop a little bit analyzing also the teams starting with the champions of course Inter Milan they are playing at home against Genoa if we check the odds Inter of course really favorites 1.38 to win this first game with Simone Inzaghi on the bench you you mentioned how Conte left, how Lukaku left, but in recent hours also they were able at least to sign the Dumfries, they also signed the Zeko from Roma. Not sure if it's going to be enough to make this Inter Milan competitive, but we saw how Simone Inzaghi did a great job with Lazio and Genoa. Danny, I don't know if they might get in trouble this season, no great signings, Ballardini is in charge. And actually, they struggled a lot to qualify in Coppa Italia. They were losing 0-2 against Perugia. Finally, they came back. What do you expect about this Inter? Well, Inter has lost three very important players. Akimi sold to PSG. He was amazing last season. Lost Lukaku in the last few weeks. No one kind of expected it, but they wanted to get a cash. And unfortunately, has lost Ericsson, at least for the first few months of the yeah. season, because of his, his heart problems that he manifested at the Euros, and is without Conte. They chose Inzaghi to continue on the same pathway. 3-5-2, so starts with a solid back three, was the best defense of the league last year, Inter, and obviously uh, tried to continue with the same imprinting. But 
Inzaghi is not just a copy of Conte. He will want to impose his style, a more possession-based football, will want his strikers to play closer to the box rather than just play sometimes too much on the counter. So I think we'll see a different Inter. Uh, the concern is how much time had Dzeko to accustom to the new teammates and to the new tactics of Inzaghi. Well, we'll soon find out because he'll have to start against Genoa. And another concern from this game is that Inter up front are depleted. Lautaro is suspended. Sanchez is not fit. Probably is on the way out. Probably the only one available is the young Uruguayan Esatriano, who had a very good uh, pre-season. Uh, Chalanoglu is the new face as well. He will be deployed more as a number 10, more of like a Luis Alberto role. We know how good the Spanish was with Inzaghi. And then a couple of new faces on the wing. You mentioned Denzel Dumfries, the new Akimi. We'll see how he accustomed it. On the left-hand side, we got Di Marco, who played really well for uh, Verona. Let's not forget Inter last year were the best team at home. 17 wins, one draw, only one defeat on the derby. 53 goals scored at the San Siro without spectators. This time the spectators was going to be back. They're going to celebrate the Scudetto won in May in style. 53 goals scored, more just at home, more than what Genoa had scored home and away. So that's why the odds are so low for Inter. And Genoa, well, uh, you know, I think Ballardini's got a tough job in hand. They lost to Shomudorov to Roma. They lost Piazza to Torino, was a very good player. They will go back to the solid 3-5-2. Uh, they got a bit of ex more of experience, perhaps in goal with Sirigo, champions of Europe, third goalkeeper at the, at, the, at the Euros. They also got Hernani in midfield from Parma. But I'm expecting a very solid and defensive-minded uh, Genoa, who last year lost 3-0 at San Siro. Uh, I think they're going to try to keep it only much, much tighter uh, this time. I'm not sure how many chances they're going to have. Let's go for an under this time. time. Under, under 2.5 goals, 255. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Verona. We have uh, Verona Sassuolo, Eusebio Di Francesco on the bench of Verona. And actually, he made a career with Sassuolo, making a great job. Uh, he was not as lucky as with uh, Sassuolo when he was last year in uh, Cagliari, in charge of Cagliari. And Sassuolo, Danny, many people got uh, surprised because this team brought so many good players to the Euro, to that Italy champions of Euro. Probably can be one of these dark horses this season if they don't have problems with the injuries as they had last season. And maybe they can challenge again European positions. And Sassuolo this year have replaced the Zerbi who went to Shakhtar and they chose another manager from the same school. So same way of playing football, 4-3-3 on the front foot, building from the back, a lot of possession. It's Dionisi who won the promotion with Empoli last year in Serie B. It's not very experienced because it's the first experience in Serie A uh, for him, but Sassuolo chose the same blueprint, which I think is very, very important for the kind of players uh, they have. Whereas different Francesco will try to change the style of uh, Verona, who with Juric were more of a 3-5-2 uh, formation, uh, solid, a lot of wing plays. Verona, uh, Di Francesco will try uh, to play, again, a more of attacking football, more expansive football. However, uh, Verona probably at the moment still need a proper goal scorer. Kalinic is not very prolific. It's pretty much the same team as last year, who did really well up until December. And then they had the obvious dip in form, which Verona has always had in the last uh, two, three years. The same for Sassuolo, pretty much the same team as last year, probably without Locatelli, who this week is going to move uh, to Juventus. But, you know, Berardi, Boga, Caputo, Raspadori, Juricic, all the attacking force is there. Let's not forget the last year Sassuolo, who missed just by one point on the Conference League qualification, were better away than at home. They made more points away than at home. They won 10 away games. So for this reason, I think also Sassuolo had a very good pre-season. Sassuolo to score first at the Bentegodi Stadium, 1.95. Mm, okay, Sassuolo to score first. Then we have uh, a newly promoted team, Empoli. They were in Serie A also very recently, going up and down against Lazio. Interesting project also 
uh, with Lazio, they have Maurizio Sarri on the bench after his experience, probably failed experience with Chelsea, Lazio, after Simone Inzaghi, of course, who did a great job qualifying even a couple of years ago. The team to the Champions League, they lost some important players that they were in the squad for so many years, Danny, that, uh, like Lulic or Parolo, especially. And Lazio uh, is an interesting project and for Sarri is a very uh, interesting challenge because he will have to adapt the same squad of last year as we speak because pretty much they haven't signed anyone apart from Hisai and Anderson who returns to Lazio to a new way of playing. So if they were used to play counter-attacking football with Inzaghi mainly with a 3-5-2, now they have to switch to a 4-3-3 and we know how Sarri uh, likes to play, controlling the ball a lot always giving uh, so precise instructions to his players that they have to memorize the tactics and also play almost by memory, by heart, as Napoli was doing under him. So I think uh, this is a challenge uh, for him. Uh, let's see how they adapt. Let's see how quickly they adapt. They have reinforced the left-hand side with this eye from Napoli. By the way, he's a former Empoli player who Sarri brought to Napoli from Empoli when Sarri himself was Empoli. So manager, so there's a lot of connection in this uh, game and also Felipe Anderson who had uh, an okay season at West Ham see how he benefits on the right hand side everything will depend again from the form of Luis Alberto uh, can Immobile do better than last year uh, let's see because on this one will depend how Lazio will do especially away from home last year they were not very good playing away from the Olimpico they were eighth in the table at the end and Empoli as you mentioned they are a little bit of a yo your club uh, although i think of the three promoted team they are the most equipped to stay in serie a uh, despite they went down three times in the last eight years from serie a uh, to serie b but they dominated serie b last year they were uh, top of the serie b pretty much all year and they got uh, aurelio andreazzoli as a manager who is another manager who likes uh, to play good football expansive football possession you know when the, when they went down three years ago in the very last uh, game against Against Inter, I remember they troubled a lot. Inter, they were chasing for a Champions League spot. It was a fascinating game, but we saw how good Empoli uh, could uh, play. Again, um, the team hasn't got a great deal of experience in Serie A. The front partnership are Lamantia and Mancuso. They did well in Serie B, but Empoli has brought back to Serie A Cutrone, who had <laughs> very poor seasons in England. A Fiorentina didn't do very well. Could it be the surprise package, maybe? But for this one, I think uh, um, I'm not sure how Lazio has assimilated Sarri, uh, Sarri ball yet. So maybe low scoring game. I'm going to be cautious. Under one goal, but in the first half, 220. So if the first half finished nil nil, you win 220. If there is one goal in the first half, you don't lose your stake. If there's more than one goal, you've lost your stake. Okay, the last game we have on Saturday is Torino Atalanta. With Torino, we have on the bench Ivan Juric. And last season, they struggled a lot, a lot, a lot to stay in uh, Serie A. And also, they struggled a lot in Coppa Italia to beat Cremonese. They could only do it in the penalty shootout. Whereas Atalanta, Dani, a team that fascinated us with their performance both in Italy and in Europe, still with Gasperini, still with the Champions League. Let's see if this season they can even challenge the title. It would be good, actually. It would be very interesting even for me. They continued with Gasperini. They chose continuity. They haven't changed the squad too much. Yes, they've lost Gollini to Spurs, replaced with Juan Musso from Udinese, Argentinian keeper, very experienced, so great choice there. And also they replaced um, El Cuti Romero with uh, Demiral from Juventus. Good acquisition. I think Demiral, the Turkish defender, can really flourish under uh, Gasperini. He can give him a little bit more of reassurance, a little bit more calmness. We saw Demiral has got the skills sometimes. He rushes she's into tackle a little bit uh, too much and then the rest is pretty much uh, the same you know the front three uh, you got Malinowski you got Pessina behind the striker who did a great European uh, championship and of course Zapata and Muriel uh, coming from uh, the bench however for this one Atalanta got a little bit uh, problems with the absentees they're missing Toloi the Ron Froiler they're all suspended Hatebor and Malinowski are injured maybe there is also uh, the 
out of Miranchuk. So Gasperini haven't got many men to go to uh, Torino Stadium. Torino that need to obviously improve on last year, especially the home form. They were awful at home. They didn't manage to win a game up until February or March, if I remember correctly. Once Nicola took over from Giampaolo, they seemed more solid, sturdy. But now Juric has got the task not only to make them hard to beat, but also to improve uh, the way they play and you know invest in the quality that they got in the team that's why they brought Piazza from Genoa was one of the best midfielders last year in the season. They still got Singo, which is a very good uh, wing back last year, and Belotti, the captain. Although there are some issues with him renewing the contract, we don't know still where he wants to go. He might be doubtful also for an injury for uh, this one. So, continuing on the 3 5 2, but we expect Torino to play more on the front foot this time. Well, let's look at the goals market for this one, and I know the odds for goals are very low because the last two meetings 2-4 for Atalanta and 0-7 in Torino so a lot of goals actually I checked the last four games also in Bergamo and Turin 24 goals in total in the last four games between Torino and Atalanta so the goals market you can go there if you want maybe a stake that is a hold that is not too high but I think Torino is going to start the season well so double chance 1x 248 Wow, you go. This is a good surprise, actually. Torino getting points from Atalanta in the first match day. Then on Sunday at the Renato Dallara, Bologna, Salernitana, Salernitana, back to Serie A after so, so, so many years. We have another team from the south in Serie A, Bologna. Dani, worst way possible to start the season. They lost in Coppa Italia 4-5 against Ternana and they were losing 1-5, but a start for another season with Mihailovic on the bench. Yeah, I watched the game yesterday. Amazing the way Bologna were picked apart by Ternana, newly promoted in Serie B. Then they almost managed to recover. It was a very entertaining game to watch. Unfortunately, not many people were at the Dallara to watch it. I mean, still summer holidays in Italy, but probably that game could suggest that Bologna could be a very entertaining uh, team to watch this season. They got plenty of quality up front, especially because they brought back to Serie A Marco Arnaudovic from China. Finally, they get a big number nine, a big uh, target man that can hold up the ball and help the other uh, teammates around in play, especially uh, the young Vignato. I think he's a very interesting track artist who plays on the left, left hand side. side, and I'm expecting him to play a lot of games, as well as Barrow, that I think will benefit from having a big partner up front. Uh, last time, last year, Barrow was playing too many times as the number nine, and that not his role. Also, Bologna added Bonifazzi, solid addition to the defense from. Udinese, they will play 4-2-3-1, plenty of options at front. Uh, the question is whether they're going to do better than last year, so finishes in the top half of the table. Let's not forget, the quality perhaps in midfield is not exactly there. They've got a lot of young, unexperienced players. With Salernitana, uh, they're going to be sturdy, they're going to be solid, they're not going to be very entertaining because that's how the teams managed by Castori normally play. They deliver the results, but they don't necessarily entertain you. That's the third participation for them in Serie A. They always got relegated straight away in the previous two appointments. And so they will play probably a very defensive 5-3-2. Uh, I'm expecting the, the two wing backs, which are two former Atalanta players, Zortea and Ruggeri, both on loan to play really, really low. Uh, they changed a lot, Salernitana, during the summer, also because a lot of players went back to the parent club Lazio. Let's not forget that club is owned or semi-owned by Claudio Lutito, who's the owner of Lazio. There are still some legal issues there because obviously the dual ownership is not allowed in uh, Serie A. Um, the hope is Federico Bonazzoli, the striker on loan from Sampdoria, was on loan from Torino last year. He's a striker that always never starts as a regular uh, number nine in the last few seasons, but he often delivers when he comes on the bench. Actually, yesterday he scored two goals against Regina. They hope he will finally flourish and step up. For this one, though, I think Bologna, because they're attacking force, because they play at home, they're going to win the first half, 240. Bologna to win the first half, then, then we go to Udine. We have uh, Udinese Juventus, again, new project of Allegri, as we were talking 
before let's see if Cristiano Ronaldo is also continuing in the team because there are some rumors that he might leave to Man City or perhaps even to PSG. Let's see what is going on. Uh, Juventus last season they struggled a lot actually to get the points uh, from this stadium. Udinese they have uh, Luca Gotti on the bench. They were maybe slightly disappointing Danny last season and probably it's going to be even harder this season because they lost their best player. Rodrigo De Paul went to Atletico de Madrid. Yeah, it's difficult to replace. The best player by far for the last two seasons, also the best player in the Copa America this summer. Uh, they will try to replace him with what they have. So Wallace, Pereira, they're going to play more of a deep lining uh, role, but they could miss the creativity. I'm sure they will miss the creativity. And the fact that the Paul was bringing the ball out of their of the midfield so quickly and creating chances on the counter. Uh, they also missed, as we mentioned before, uh, Musso, the keeper, replaced by Silvestri uh, from Verona. And then they done a very Udinese thing. They went to the Bundesliga and picked up Lazar Samarzic, the 20 years old Croatian from Leipzig. He only played seven games last season. Everyone speaks very highly about him. They paid three millions and maybe they will give him more opportunities in midfield, but I think not for this this game against uh, Juventus, so it will take a little bit of time. Uh, Udinese, they need to focus on their home form. I remember last year there were five or six games in a row where they kept a clean sheet or conceded only one in those games. They didn't concede against Lazio, didn't concede against Inter or uh, only one one against Atalanta. So they were hard to beat at home for a period. Uh, and in fact, they were the second best home defense overall. Uh, so that's where the strengths are. Uh, they have a very good uh, right back in Nahuel Molina, the Argentinian, playing the, again in the Copa America, scored against Juventus last year. So he's, he's going to be one of the best players or one of the most promising players. Pereira and De Lofeo will need to produce the magic and the spark up front. Okaka, again, similar like Verona, we spoke again earlier before, they need a big striker, a prolific number nine. Juventus, so far, the same team as last year maybe Lucatelli will come uh, this season so what is Allegri thinking about is to put Aaron Ramsey in front of the back four to give him a little bit more of a Pirlo role if you like or a Jorginho role he's been doing well so far uh, the Welsh in pre-season is he gonna be the key the change to Juventus midfield who last year struggled a lot to dominate possession and games because the midfield of Betancourt and Arthur didn't work, they didn't have the speed, the awareness, the way to dictate uh, the game. Uh, Dybala is another good news, he's, gonna, he's fully fit, he's probably going to start behind the number nine. Who's going to be the number nine? Is Cristiano want to play really up front on his own, he prefers to be deployed on the left, but then Juventus will have to rely on Morata and play Morata, Cristiano and Dybala, that could be too much if you think also on the other side you got Yes, Federico Chiesa is going to start for sure. He could be the real main man for uh, Juventus. Caio e Giorgio for Santos, good acquisition. Fourth striker, probably not ready to play uh, this one. Last year, as you remember, 2-1 win for Juventus, too late go for Ronaldo. Um, I still think with Allegri, they're going to be a bit more pragmatic. They're going to mind the defense a little bit more. Juventus clean sheet, 2-25. Mm, Caio Giorgio, that our friend uh, Leo Bacanian told us that mm, he's not very confident yet about the Brazilian when he moved to Juventus. Then we go to two teams that were very disappointed uh, last, last season again. Roma, Fiorentina, but Dani, we have the special one. I think we are all going to pay even more attention to this new project with Mourinho on the bench. Uh, a lot of changes also in the squad and some good players also left the club. I was surprised to see Paul Lopez, who is a great uh, goalkeeper, leaving to France. Also Cecic Under, uh, a still young, promising Turkish player. And of course, Edin Dzeko. I want to say, Danny, about Fiorentina. Last season was a failure. Now Iacchini is uh, taking the team. Whereas Blaovic, what is going to happen with him? If they lose uh, Blaovic, for sure it's going to be a major blow for the new project of this Fiorentina. 
and that's the problem with um, you know with the with the Serie A starting and the transfer market still being open. You know, a lot of changes to the team still gonna happen until the first of September. Some of the teams are incomplete, and Fiorentina, I think, is one of them, uh, really. But let's start with Roma. Uh, Mourinho will celebrate his official game number one thousand on the bench uh, on Sunday against Fiorentina. He started in twenty in two thousand, losing actually. He was a Benfica lost one nil against Boa Vista, but then you know his career took a different uh, path. Uh, so they had a very good preseason. Uh, Roma, I think Mourinho has restored the enthusiasm, the wow factor. Uh, he seems to have settled really well in uh, Rome. See how the uh, team responds. But the pro- the owner, the American, the Friedkins have invested quite a lot. Uh, finally, Shomudorov from Juventus, uh, from Genoa, Abram, forty. Million pounds signing from Chelsea won't be ready for this one though. Vigna, the left back from Uruguay, because Spinazzola unfortunately is injured until November. He was the best left back at the Euros. But the biggest signing for Roma is Nicolo Zaniolo. He's a player that they didn't have for last season, didn't have for pretty much year and a half because a nasty, two nasty injuries at the ligaments. And he's the player who play in a 4-3-3 that can really change this team. Tall player, ball carrier, good shoot, good physicality, can uh, find the key pass, can beat the defense. He's a kind of player that Italy perhaps never had, the sort of tall midfielder that goes box to box. He's a sort of Italian Gerard or Lampard, if you like, but he needs to deliver. So far, he hasn't quite uh, fulfilled his expectation, but could be massive for Roma. They play a Fiorentina team that uh, they also had an exciting summer. First of all, because they appointed Gattuso and then he left. And then they went to Spezia and got Vincenzo Italiano from them. But it's interesting the fact that they went from Italiano because Italiano is a manager that saved Spezia by letting them play well, by again building from the back, possession based football, attacking football. So this is how he saved uh, Spezia. Um, interesting signing of Nicola Gonzalez from Spezia. Stuttgart, so that's the record signing. They break the record of signing this summer with the Argentinian who won the uh, Copa America. Will they sell Milenkovic, the defender? That's again another uh, question mark. Apart from uh, Vlaovic, Fiorentina needs to improve anyway. Last season away form, they were a relegation form away, only 16 points. I think uh, it's going to be a difficult one for th- this one. Roma's got a lot of options up front. They can also count on, count on Borja Mayoral at the good season. Roma to score in both halves, 260. Okay, Roma to score in both halves. Then we go to the south, to the Diego Armando Maradona, Napoli, Venezia. Another interesting project for Napoli with Spalletti on the bench. Uh, uh, of course, reputed uh, manager with international experience, also with Inter. After Gattuso failed to qualify in the last game, this team for the Champions League. And then we have Venezia, Dani. I think we all enjoyed pretty much their celebration when they came back to the Serie A after winning the playoffs. Uh, always really nice to see a club and a stadium like the Venezia has in Serie A. They beat in penalties Frosinone in the Cup, struggling probably one of the teams that will struggle the most in this Serie A. Well, it's going to be one of the best away days in Italy, you know, going to the Laguna, to Venezia, to the Stadio Penzo, who is actually here to get a boat uh, together. I think Venezia, especially for people abroad, for supporters, is going to be probably their cult club for this season. Also, they release a very nice shirt as well. But when we look on the pitch, uh, Venezia, they haven't got a great deal of experience in Serie A. Um, you know, Paolo Zanetti, first uh, chance to manage on Serie A. They kept uh, the, the core team of last year. Interesting signing of a Nigerian striker Oderkeke. Uh, Bruges, 13 goals in the last two seasons. So not a great tally, but he has got Champions League experience. Anur Sigurdsson from CSK Moscow. So these two going to bring a bit more of uh, international pedigree. Then there is interesting signing of Mattia Galdara, former Juventus, former Milan. The defender never quite established himself uh, there. And the rest are the players who won uh, the 
eh, Serie B and they go to Napoli uh, which has got only one change so far which is the arrival of Spalletti and the opportunity with Spalletti is to try to bring a bit more stability a little bit more normality try to live not on the roller coaster of emotions as in Naples they were used to be with Gattuso and partially uh, with Sarri and basically bring belief with such an experienced manager that this group of players is as good as they get and they don't have to have an inferiority complex are, uh, be with other teams. I think sometimes Napoli suffer from that last season and also they need to forget the last game of the season last year against Verona when a draw uh, took them out of the Champions League spot it was in their hands so they need to just to forget uh, that uh, drama. Um, they have to again disappointing transfer market so far because they haven't brought anyone and actually they got the injury of them uh, who's injured so he won't play in this in this game without Bakayoko was on loan they didn't uh, brought him back uh, they definitely need another uh, left back because they lost his side to Lazio at the moment Maro Rui is playing there it's not what they need they need another striker to help Ojimen this could be Ojimen season last season he had injuries uh, between the season but when he played he did deliver if he shows more uh, consistent consistency and more calmness in front of the goal he could be the real difference still a lot of talks on the future of Insigne his contract is by in the summer he's wanted by the Premier League he's wanted by Inter so again um, this is a difficult situation to manage maybe the unsurprised the surprise star could be Unas who had a splendid season with Crotone last year he did really well scoring goals providing assists for Simi uh, but obviously went down so if he finds space maybe he could be uh, the surprise package of uh, this Napoli which we not forget was the second best attack at home last year 50 goals scored at the San Paolo actually called the Maradona now Napoli to win 2-0 to 30 mm-hmm. then we have uh, Cagliari Spezia two teams that struggle last season but in a different way, in my opinion, Spezia actually was a great success. It's the only newly promoted team that last season stayed in Serie A. And Danny, as you mentioned, they played really, really good football, especially in the first half of the season. Whereas Cagliari, for most of the season, they look a Serie B team. At the end, they reacted and luckily, and with a good team of players, of course, they stayed in Serie A. I guess uh, we have to expect uh, much more, especially for Cagliari in this season. Well, they'll have to at least achieve a salvation that is much easier or, you know, uh, with more anticip- with more uh, you know games to play as last season. Only when Leonardo Semplici took over uh, in January, February, the, the team uh, looked... Uh, the quality that they have, they play a simple football, direct football, they rely a lot on the big, tall striker uh, Pavoletti up front, but that's how Semplici uh, plays. 3-5-2, uh, hard to beat, not much of a session but trying to create as many chances as possible again sometimes with a long ball or crosses they will rely on the two up front Joao Mario and Pavoletti big question mark again the future of Nathan Nandez the Uruguayan he uh, was approached by Inter then Inter brought Dan Fries Nandez almost kind of promised already to go to Milan they don't seem to want him maybe Spurs want him he's gonna he's going to miss probably this game and it could be important for Cagliari in the, in the continuation of the season also because they have to do without uh, Marco Rog in midfield the Croatian had a, a nasty injury in pre-season is going to miss at least three or four months but they got Strutman uh, from Genoa who replaces Nangolan who's going to uh, Belgium Zappa is a very interesting wing back on the right Dalbert from Inter in one of his thousands loans move he never quite made it at Inter so Inter loans in every season to a different team last year with Fiorentina this year is uh, Cagliari Dalbert on the left hand side to provide perhaps a bit of spark a bit of crosses and they play Spezia uh, Spezia I think this is a team that could be in danger for two reasons first of all uh, they won't be able to strengthen the team in January and for the next four uh, transfer windows because they've been banned from transfers by FIFA for breaching rules on signing minor players they got a new manager Tiago Motta whose first experience in Serie A was disappointed with Genoa he was sacked after a few weeks and also because last year the the bunch the core of the team was made by 
players that were on loan, now they lost them. So they lost a good crop of players, Chabot, Agume, Saponara, Farias, Galabino, who was under contract, that perhaps were not starters, but good replacement and squad teams. They have replaced these uh, players with young prospects. They got the Bulgarian Risto from Fiorentina, a promising defender, Nicolaou from Empoli, Greek, again, promising defender, played a lot in Serie B last season, uh, Kelvin Amian from Tolosa, that's the biggest signing, 3 million for uh, the, the, um, the, um, the right back from Tolosa. And the interesting one is Viktor Kovalenko from Atalanta, former Shakhtar, didn't quite establish himself at Atalanta, they got him on loan this season, and Colli from Verona, up front, only scored one goal though last season. The big question mark is, why is Enzola not playing? Well, Thiago Motta doesn't quite rate him, although he was the highest scorer last season with 11 goals and pretty much saved the team with his goals. So they might be in trouble. They might be in trouble at uh, in Sardinia. Cagliari to win 207. Mm, it's uh, funny to see the list of transfers in all Italian clubs because it's that big with all the <laughs> loans that yes. always happen in the calcio mercato. Very difficult to follow uh, whose properties uh, every player they change uh, yeah, constantly. And our last game, Danny, interesting one, Sandoria Milan. Sandoria is still with uh, Claudio Ranieri on the bench. They did a great season, in my opinion. In the previous one, at least they got uh, safe comfortably, even a, a little bit, even looking to European spots at the end of the season. Let's see if this season they can target uh, more the Europa League spots. Whereas, what is going to happen with uh, Milan again? Last season, they challenged even the title for a long time, especially the first part of the season. Of course, in my opinion, they didn't have the roster to fight until the end with Inter uh, they have some signings they are gonna keep uh, Brahim from Real Madrid they signed the uh, Gigu they are back in the Champions League what do you expect about this Milan I think Milan uh, had an interesting summer as well, and it's a little bit of a question mark because they lost two of the best players, Donnarumma, free transfer to PSG, Chalanolu, free transfer to Inter. So they kept the same team, and their plan is to hope that the, the players who last season didn't quite deliver, for example, Tonali in midfield, they're going to step up and they're going to improve. If this happens, Milan has got enough in the squad to perhaps challenge for uh, the title and um, you know um, Ibrahimovic obviously is the main figure he's 40 years old they brought Giroud uh, from uh, Chelsea to be his partner in um, in attack uh, Giroud doesn't expect to to start all the games but I think he will start enough games there to have an impact something that Mandzukic didn't have last year when he was brought in uh, January. He had a decent precision, the Frenchman, and perhaps Milan with Giroud and Ibrahimovic could even try to play with two up front, two big strikers. That is a solution that often works in Serie A. Uh, maybe not in European football anymore, but in Serie A, uh, yes, it's a very physical uh, championship. Uh, um, Tomori, uh, they signed him from Chelsea permanently, so he's going to be the starter instead of Romagnoli next uh, to Kier. But yes, the, the hope is that the the, the players in midfield will perform better than what they did in the later uh, part of the season. They will be without Kessie for this uh, game at Sampdoria. Sampdoria, they changed the manager. Roberto D'Aversa, despite being relegated with Parma, has been given another chance in Serie A. And it's an interesting proposition. I think uh, uh, they will try to play more attacking football. That's the idea of uh, D'Aversa, more on the front foot. Be more courageous, something that sometimes they lacked against Ranieri. Let's not forget Ranieri has done an amazing job two years ago saving them but last year when they were saved i didn't see them approaching the game with a lot of courage it's a pretty much the same team as last year without keita balde back to monaco because he was alone still qualiarella on top still scoring score yesterday in the Serie A but is a team that has got quite a few old players already considering that also Antonio Candreva is a starter the key man is or could be Damsgaard who had a great Euros with Denmark unless 
it got sold to the Premier League. We will see in the next few uh, weeks. Let's not forget the last year Sampdoria at home were good. They had uh, 30 points in the end, the same as Milan, who were very poor at home. Sampdoria last season even beat Inter away, so 2-1 at Marassi, but they're facing Milan, the top team last year playing away. 49 points away from Milan last season, even 10 more than Inter, only two defeat, 16 wins, 43 goals scored. For this reason, look, I'm going to trust Milan once again. Milan to win 193. Mm, sorry, I thought uh, I checked wrongly. <laughs> Left uh, the blue Cerchietti, then Danny. Very good analysis, good tips for us to place our bets in this uh, first match day of the Serie A. Let's see your first account. First act of the Serie A, five games as always, five out of ten. Verona Sassuolo over 2.5 goals, Lazio to win at Empoli, Torino Atalanta over 2.5 goals, Bologna to take the lead against Salernitana and Napoli to score in both halves. The total odds are 15-66. Okay, Danny, thank you. It's a pleasure, of course, to enjoy Serie A with you. And let's see if we can make some money and follow the Calcio Mercato. Always very interesting. See you. See you, Edu. Enjoy the Serie A. Bye bye. Now we have all the tips to bet in this first match day of the Serie A. Are you supporting Inter, Juve? Well, you can see everything now on the screen, everything that Donny, Danny told us. But remember that I also want to know your opinion. So. Don't forget to leave a comment below with your tips and of course if you enjoy our videos you can support us by clicking on the like button, subscribing and click on the bell to get notifications and if you prefer also we have a podcast for you. See you next week. Enjoy Serie A.